It's a landscape that inspires and that drives design and innovation. You know, we have wonderful forests, we have fast flowing rivers, beautiful skies in the evening. Texas kind of grew up, you know, in this area. The reasons were more complex than, than just the landscape and the raw material. We had um, the people and the entrepreneurs. To set up our own business and we started to manufacture here in the borders. There's an amazing kind of community of people in all the little villages and all the towns around Gala and within Gala. In terms of local identity, you know, I think we've got a very innovative community. The manufacturers were, were brave and they always have been brave about innovating, innovating techniques. When you kind of see the diversity of work that goes on and the people that are drawn to air precisely because of that, then you actually see a really creative, artistic place. They've had to be really resilient, they've had to be really resourceful. So I actually think our graduates are just getting better and better. We set a brief with the third year students. And that was based on Brennan Klein, sustainability and space guidelines. From my research on Bernard Klein, I instantly saw a common theme of like rusty colours. And I was like photographing rusty objects on the street. And then that in itself was already creating like a pattern for me to then knit. Follow one thread could take you so many different directions. Businesses like Sinclair Duncan Textiles will take their new ranges to, to Paris, to, to New York, um, to Milan, and throughout the world. The legacy from the Scottish border will always continue because it's so inset with the tartans and the tweeds. The border textiles are famous across the design world. From a lot of couture houses like Chanel, Armani, Louis Vuitton. In the States, or you look in Japan, or you look anywhere in Europe and the ranges and catwalks. All the big names that you could imagine. There is always tweed or tartan involved.